Hey everybody, Rick's here. In this video, we're gonna be making ourselves some wooden coasters with the quick transfer paper. This is gonna be all the basics. Hopefully it will answer any questions you have as to how to do transfers onto wood. Let's get right into it. Okay, you know, uh, I've made a lot of videos on doing image transfers and I still see comments underneath the videos that say things like, uh, can I use other kinds of paper or what kind of paper are you using? Even though I'm, I'm actually talking about quick transfer paper. So I'm going to try to cover all the bases in this video and go through the applications, show you how simple it is to actually do image transfers onto, uh, in this case, we're going to just do nice wood pieces. Now I get these on eBay. They're very inexpensive. They're clean, flat, sanded, smooth. So you should be able to be getting perfect transfers every time with these. I've got five of them here. I could do something on each side if I wanted and, and kind of cut the usage down in half for demonstration. But actually I'm going to be wanting to keep these because I'm going to be doing these uh, family photos here of uh, my wife and I and then our little girl here when she was just a little baby. She's a full grown lady now around 27 or 28 but this is back when she was a uh, more manageable. <laughs> And I'm also going to do one of these wooden uh, bevel type things that uh, you can hang up on the wall or whatever. You buy these like at Hobby Lobby or other art supply places. So we'll do one of these. I haven't quite figured out which one of these images I'm going to do on that. All right. So that's what we're going to do in this video. It's really super easy. So like I said, I'm going to go through all the basics. So here we go. Number one. The paper that I'm using is called Rick's Can Do It Quick Transfer Paper and it is available on the rickscanduit.com website. It is not regular paper in that it's specially treated here in my home. I, I make it homemade and uh, it, is, it is labor intensive to, to make a whole bunch of these for everyone who is uh, requesting to get the paper for themselves but it's specially coated to allow the image to release from the paper really easy as you're going to see in this video. Now of course the paper originally is just basic paper but if you were to use basic paper without it being treated the way I've treated these then the paper just doesn't peel off the wood or whatever it is. You would literally have to scrub it off and many of you, I'm sure, are aware of the wet and rub, wet and rub, wet and rub. You make a mess and you rub off some of your image and it dries and it has a white haze on it. Then you got to wet it again, rub, rub, rub. What a waste. I hated doing that and that's uh, why I wanted something that would allow easy peel off. I used to buy it from this gentleman from Portugal. Uh, it was like called a TPPT or some paper like that. I can't remember. But he stopped selling it years ago. And uh, that prompted me to make my own. All right. So anyway, uh, as you can see here, I think it's uh, under the camera here. Yeah, good. Okay, these are family photos. Uh, obviously, this is back when I was uh, half my age now. Um, I'm 63 now. This is back when, when I was in my 20s. Uh, this is, well, actually, no, that would have been my 30s because my daughter was, was born when I was 35. So this would have to have been, I was 35 or 36. Same here. Um, my 40s right here. Definitely, this was my 50s here. Uh, my wife and I were on our... 25th wedding anniversary 
Uh, we've been married now over 36 years. So um, this was around 52 years old or something. I can't remember. I, I, that's a lot of math, right? Okay. Uh, here's uh, back when I was in my 40s. I remember that because of the, the motorcycle that I have there. Uh, was back in the early 2000s, so I was in my 40s there. My wife and I used to love riding motorcycles through uh, Southern California and so forth. Well, here we're in Big Bear, and here we're at Bass Lake. Uh, we were with some friends. Uh, the color's a little too saturated in this one here. You can see that uh, I'm missing my mustache in this photo where I have it and everything else, and of course I'm missing it now, so... Uh, when I grow it now, it's, it goes all over the place. Uh, it's what happens when you get older. Mm, what a bummer. Anyway, so let me cut these up, and then we're going to go into making these wooden coasters, okay? So you print these off laser printer only. Use laser printer only for this paper, okay? So I've answered two questions there. One, this is not just any kind of paper. This is special paper. It's the Ricks can do it, quick transfer paper. Two, use a laser printer. Don't use an inkjet printer, okay? The uh, laser printer puts toner on the top. Inkjet soaks ink into it. It messes up the coating, and then it makes the paper stick. Uh, it's possible to use it, but you may end up having to go back to the rub, 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 to get remaining pieces off, and I don't like that. The paper is also gonna say on one end, print on the other side, makes it real simple to know that uh, what side you need to print on. All right, so I'm gonna cut them out like that, okay? There's that one, there's that one. All right, let's get these two. And you'll notice that I printed, I made these images big enough to cover half a sheet, so I put two on a sheet, and the reason for this is I want to get full coverage on these wooden squares. I think these are like five inches square. I'm not sure, but it looks like five inches, just roughly estimating. So I want to make sure I get full coverage. And that's why I printed these, these up so big. Okay, there we go there. There was the cruise on our 25th anniversary. It was a carnival cruise on uh, looks like 2011 2011 that's what it looks like it says i can't tell so you can extrapolate we're in 2022 at the end of 2022 so that's 11 years ago right so that was the 25th we just had our 20 our 36th anniversary in august so um, there you go. Now that's my uh, mother there, uh, me in the middle, my wife and my daughter, and, uh, and then the other young lady in there is, uh, my little sister. She's 13 years younger than me, and then there's my wife, my, my daughter, and my mother again. That's in Carlsbad, California there. Now I don't live on the West Coast anymore. I live out here in the Ozark area. But, uh, anyway... That's enough of me and my family there. Let's get right into doing transfers. All right. Now, recommended, okay? I recommend using a gel medium like Liquitex. You can also use Blick or some other brand as long as it's a good gel medium. Uh, I think they're all pretty much the same. And uh, you can use Mod Podge and glues and all that stuff. But I'm going to tell you with gel medium, I like it. It works the best, as far as I, I'm concerned, it's the easiest to use. You can use all the other glues. Anything that can glue paper will, will allow you to do this. But I'm going to give you for sures that, you know, really get this done. So here's, here's what you want to do, okay? Now, I'll use a brush to put the initial on here. All right, initial amount on there. Okay, here's the key, all right? You want full coverage. You do not want any dry spots, none, or sticky. If it's sticky, it's already, it's already drying. 
in that area and you need to make sure that it stays moist. But what some people do is they put too much, you know, in an effort to keep it moist and it wrinkles up the paper. And if you wrinkle the paper, those wrinkles may cause lines in your transfer. You don't want that. So this is why I like to use my finger because with my finger, I could feel that I'm covering everything and I can feel if any part is dry or sticky and to make sure that it's all nice and moist. But at the same time, I can scrape off any big chunks like that goofy piece right there shouldn't be in there. Sometimes you get these hard bits. And you don't want these hard bits under there. You want just the gel medium itself and you want to make sure that you have full coverage. Anywhere that it's dry or it's sticky, which means it's, it's already started drying, you may not get a good transfer in those locations. And you don't want too much, so any excess I'm wiping off at the same time. Okay, and I'm trying to make sure that I don't wipe off gel and end up with bare spots. There we go. So you just do that, it's not a big deal. Um, but get your image on there quick enough before the gel medium dries because it will dry pretty quick. I'm going to do it like this so I can really center the, the thing on, on the subjects there. Okay, so I'm pressing the paper on just so that I have it centered right. And then I'm going to use a plastic thing, something I can see through, a transparency, whatever. And this is to prevent getting glue or gel medium on my brayer. And you want good contact to roll really good. And see, this will prevent, if you have ooze out, it won't get on my roller. This was a suggestion by a viewer. And so, you know, I'm learning from some of you guys too. You know, you say, hey, why don't you use something clear or put it on top of there? Okay, that's a great idea. I've spent all this time cleaning up brayers and you don't want to get... Uh, you don't want to get any gel medium on the back of your paper here. Okay, once you've got that rolled on pretty good, looks like looks like I've got all the excess air out. Sometimes you can see a bubble or something. Like you want to get that out, but I think that's good. You know, and sometimes when you have missing parts on your photos and stuff, it's not a big deal. It sometimes it gives it character. You know what I mean? But anyway. Uh, that's it right there. Now what you can do is, if you want to speed it along, you can take a heat gun or a hair dryer. I have this Hippie Crafter heat gun that I use a lot. And you can just go on there in three, four minutes. That's basically at three, four minutes and this thing, this thing would be really good. I'm just... I see any air bubbles. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have any air bubbles. I want perfection here. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna lay that to the side for right now to dry because I've got more to do. All right, so the next one, let's see. Well, this one here looks like I'm not gonna get the whole family in there. I should have probably made that picture a little smaller. Should I do it like this? Nah. So anyway, I'm going to end up cutting part of my mom out and part of my wife out. I'm sure they'll forgive me. And again, let's just slather on some of this. And I'm going for complete coverage here, okay? Really easy to do. Real easy, okay? Just don't leave any part dry or sticky. That sticky part is too dry. And don't leave this too wet. And, and sometimes you can feel these little hard bits. Get those hard bits out of there. I feel the hard bit in there. I gotta get that out. Where's it at now? If you don't use your finger, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to know that that you've got those in there. So trust me, gel medium isn't gonna mess your fingers up. Okay. Got a lot of dry over here. I want to get Get some of that gel way over here. So there's a hard bit right there. When you get that off, it depends on how perfect you want it to be. I'm. These are my family photos here, so 
I'm going to make these coasters as perfect as I can. Now I can feel the gel is starting to tack up. I've got to hurry up with this. I'm taking too much time. But I don't want all that goo on there. Those little bits. All right. Yeah, it's starting to get kind of dry, so I'm going to have to hurry on this one. Okay, so let's just put that down right there. And, of course, I'm going to put me in the center there because I'm... I am in the center in the photo. You guys like it when the glue dries on your hand? You go like this and you roll them up into these little, little pulley things. Okay, so again, you can see you can see the the bubbling. Let's see if I can bring that up. You can see the bubbling. You want to flatten all that out. Get all that air out. Okay, so again, I'm going to put plastic on here. And I'm going to push out all the air and give it nice, good, flat. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And this is just getting rid of any excess. You don't want that excess in there. I have a crease right there. I don't know what that's going to do, but no worries. Okay. I hope that I have good contact there. It looks pretty good. I'm going to set that aside. Now, one of the other questions is, um, can you leave these on for overnight or whatever? Yes, you can. I do find, though, that the longer you leave it on without doing the removal, that it may... It may be a little bit more stubborn, but it will peel off. So I, f I found that to be the case. It seems like the aging of it or something just, it's like, hey, the earlier the better. But it, I haven't had any problems. Another hard, another hard piece right there. I wish this gel medium didn't have these bits, but they do. They get crusty around the edges of the lid there. And then you put it on your thing and then you, you wonder why is there this little part that didn't transfer? Well, because you had that little hard bit in there. It kept the paper from touching the wood, you know. So use your fingers and make sure that you don't have any of those in there. Now I've got a lot of gel on here. I could feel that I've got too much. So I'm kind of wiping it across and off and then I got these little bits that I'm Trying to take off. At the same time, I'm making sure I got full coverage. I don't want any dry spots and I don't want any sticky either. Sticky means that the gel is already setting up and it may not adhere to your image. So you want it moist. It's very important. You want it still wet, but you don't want it sopping wet. That makes sense. You, you just want enough that it's just nice and moist, but you don't want it. There's a lot, there's a lot on there. Oh. It was a hard thing on there. I had to get that off. And I would not have known it was there if it wasn't for my finger. I could feel it with my finger as I go across and I feel these little bits. Take those off. Don't leave them on there if you want perfection. You know, after you've done a few, it becomes second nature. It's, it's not that hard to do. Here's some dry area right here. I could feel it, it got started getting dry. Took too long to come back to it. There we go. Okay, so I think I have everything now. It's not too sopping wet. It's got a nice coat all over. And we're ready to go. All right. So this one. How about the 25 year? No, I want to save that for over there. Okay, so this one here. All right. Make sure you have a roll of paper towels hanging around. You definitely are going to need it. All right, let's get the air bubbles out of this one.
All right. And inspected. Now, if you look, you can see there's some debits in there. You see that right there? Uh, there's also this hole right here. Okay. These areas here may be the trouble spots. Make sure you give it some extra attention um, because it just may be that you've got either a crack in the wood or maybe one of those hard bits are in the way and it's not going to let the paper contact the, the surface of the wood properly. Some things are, you know, out of your control, the condition of the wood and stuff. I mean, unless you're going to go sand it and fill it yourself, you know, just take what you get. Anyway, I think that looks pretty good. I think that's on there nice. I'm going to go ahead and move that off to the side. Okay, and let's see. We've got three more to go here. So let's, let's do that one. Okay. Again, I'm going to take my sponge brush here and put the crud on, aka the gel medium. Make sure I got full coverage using my finger as a paintbrush. There's a lot of hard crusties on this thing. I could feel it. Okay, make sure I get all that off. I don't like those things. They just make life miserable. Just take them off with your fingers and wipe them on a paper towel. Try to make this as smooth as possible. Yeah, if you guys have any ideas as to how to prevent these crusties, that would be great. Some of you might be gel medium experts and say, well, you know, all you have to do is, you know, this or that or whatever. And you won't get all these crusties. And yeah, crusties is the name I gave it. I don't know what the official name is for that. It's still pretty wet. Um, I don't want it too wet. Like I mentioned, you start wrinkling up your paper. You don't want... And the nice thing though is it, it gives you a little more working time to make sure that you've got really good coverage on this thing. And as I'm doing this with my finger, I could feel for any of those hard bits and scrape it off. Oh, there, I could even hear that one. Now, if you're not into, you know, getting gel medium on your fingers, I don't know what to tell you then, you know. Ooh, there was a dry spot there. I could see that I didn't have anything on it. Wow. I used the reflection of the light. If you reflect life off of it, light off of it, I should say, not life, uh, you can see if you have any areas that, that you scrape the gel medium off. And that there's nothing on there. Okay, I could feel it starting to tack up. So I'm, I'm taking too much time here with this gel medium. And I could tell I still have bits on here. Um, but I'm not going to be able to get them all off, unfortunately. So if, if, if I end up not getting a complete transfer, oh well. But here we go. Put that down on there. Okay. And here we go. Let's get that back underneath the camera there so we can see it. I see all the lines. So I have a lot of gel in there. I can tell that because it, it's making the paper, it's got ridges. You can see the ridges, ridges on the paper. We got to get those out. Those are air pockets, okay? If the gel is too wet, the paper starts to get a little wrinkly. You don't want that. We want 100% contact. Now that's starting to look good. And I can see where there's some bits underneath there. 
Unfortunately, I can't do anything about those. If you, let me see if I can show you, if you can see it. See right there? There's a hard bit right underneath the paper. So I may end up with, with a little spot with no uh, image transfer there. It gets in the way of adhesion. You usually can't flatten those out. And also notice too, even though the wood looks nice and flat and stuff, uh, it may actually have little waves in the wood itself because I could I could feel the waves. So that surface is not really that flat on this one. Let's see, make sure I don't have lifting here. Okay, and let's see, let's do one more of these squares, and then we're going to do the the main event there. Okay, so let's let's put some more gel medium on here. So you're going to get to see several examples. So you know this is not a one-off. Let me get all the crusties off my finger. And I do this before that camera shuts off. It has like a 30 minute shut off on it. I hate that feature of the cannons. It's like, what's wrong with that thing? Nobody wants to film more than 30 minutes. And you got gel medium on your hand and you got to get up and restart the camera again. <laughs> Oh, that's just too much. Okay, I got a lot on here. So I'm going to just scrape the excess off so as I'm spreading it. Okay. Don't want it too wet. You just want it, you want it to be moist when you put the image on, but you don't want it soaking wet from the gel, it will wrinkle the paper. That's how paper behaves with moisture. It wrinkles. It curls, wrinkles, does all those nasty things. Okay, I see the See an area here that I apparently scraped off the gel, so it was there was nothing there. See, you can see right here. See right on the edge. I wiped it off, and you got to be careful doing that. Make sure you have gel there too. You got to have gel gel everywhere that you want to transfer. Anywhere you scrape it off, you got nothing left to transfer onto. So keep an eye. Use use the reflection of the light. To see that you have full coverage. Okay, it's starting to tack up again. It takes so long to do this. Oh, there's a dry area there. I didn't, uh, I took it off by accident. All right, I think I got it all. Get this off my fingers as much as I can. All right. Ugh. There we go. Once again, put the plastic on top and press. All right, now I'll go the other way. See the camera's turned off, so all right. Well, the camera turned off, so I just had to get up and turn it back on and give me another 30 minutes. Let's get back to rolling on this thing again. All right.
There's no substitute for good contact, all right? Make sure that you, you have rolled it really good so that you'll get complete transfer. All right, now we're gonna do this really fascinating wood block thing, beveled thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put the anniversary picture on it. This would be cool to put on a fireplace mantle or in the bathroom or you know bathroom walls with these little tiny things. If you're into decorating that way, all right. It's warm in here today. Whew. It's fall, but you know. Okay, there we go. I really want to make sure that this one here is good because I got a feeling this is going to be a real good keepsake. And the nice thing about these wood coaster things, you can make these things all day long, anytime you want. They make fantastic gifts, very personalized. You get a photograph of your friends, family, whatever. You're wondering, what do I, what I am going to give them, you know? Well, you give them a personalized gift. Everyone loves gifts for whatever the occasion. It's saying, hey, we're thinking about you, that we actually spent time to custom make the gift. Isn't that right? Don't you love it when somebody custom makes you something? Rather than goes and buys it in the bicycle aisle of Walmart. Not sure what anyone would buy me in the bicycle aisle of Walmart. I just had to say that. All right. Well, this is not going to get all of us, but it's going to get a big part here. Boom. Hopefully I've centered this well enough. If not, well, I'm sure she'll forgive me. This is our last one here, and then we're going to start revealing, huh? I bet you guys are real anxious to see that. I know I am. All right. Oh, I can see lots of air in there. I've got to get those out. All right. There we go. We'll let that rest. Okay, now... Let me go ahead and seal up this gel medium so that it's good to go next time. Okay. And uh, I want to have some water. I got a little cup of water with a sponge here. And let's, uh, let's grab the first one we did. It had the longest time to dry. And I'm going to make sure that it's dry just by applying a little heat to it. Though I'm sure it's ready to go. It's been sitting there for 30 minutes. But this is just to make sure we're good to go, okay? Now, if I start pulling on it, that, that paper needs to be glued on. So don't, don't start peeling this thing off if, it, if, it, if it's not glued on. You want to make sure it's dry and glued on. Now, here's what we're going to need to do. Get yourself a clean paper towel. Get yourself some water, okay, like this. And all you're going to do here is you're just going to moisten the back of the paper here. Just moisten it. Make sure it gets soaked in. You want to make sure it soaks in. It needs to get through the paper there. Now this is not your, your uh, old fashioned wet and rub, wet and rub. No, we are not doing any kind of rubbing. All we want to do is peel. Okay, so let's just take off the excess. Just put your paper towel down on it like this and just take the excess. You don't want to dry it. All right, and then just start peeling it. Just slowly peel it back like this. And you can see right there, that's a full removal of the image. Notice the image came off the paper. 
Regular paper is not going to do this. And there, there it is right there. Look at that. Is that awesome or what? And then you can, when it dries, you can spray it with, with like a, a, a varnish or something to protect it. Um, in another video, what we're going to do is we're going to laminate. Um, some people laminate to do uh, sublimation. I'm like, why do you need to do sublimation on wood when you can just do it like this? Uh, this is so much easier than sublimation and you don't need sublimation ink. You don't need to use a heat press unless you want to heat laminate over it, which we're going to do in another video. Otherwise, you just spray it and you're good to go or just leave it the way it is. Uh, but there you go. There's one. Yay. Can you see that right there? That should look real pretty, right? Let's do another. Here's this one. I may not even need to dry it because it's been sitting for a while, but I want to just make sure. And this is what I want to avoid. And if you could see, you could see, look how it bubbled up. The paper wrinkled up. See that? That's indication that I put too much gel medium on it. And I don't know if I could flatten it out. Well, a little bit, but it depends on how dry it was underneath. Flattening won't do anything if it's dry already. But yeah, you want to avoid the wrinkling. See, I, I don't know if you can see that in the camera. I hope you can but it's got little wrinkles. You want to avoid wrinkling. That means you have too much like here. See, I didn't have that trouble so much because I didn't put too much, see? So anyway, on here's the anniversary one. Make sure that's nice and flat. All right, so this one's ready to go, I hope. We'll take some water again. Go all the way over the back. Just moisten it. You don't need to soak it to death, just moisten it. You take your finger and kind of try to, you know, move that water into the paper so it absorbs like a sponge. Just get it to soak it up. And you can tell that it it's, does that because you'll start rubbing the paper off and you know you're, you've already rubbed all the water in and you don't want to rub the paper off. So anyway, there you go, just like that. I'm gonna take this same paper towel. I know it's a little moist, but it'll still take up the slack, okay. It's just to take the excess off and then just start peeling. Okay, this one here, looks like uh, the glue on this one here was already setting up. That was the one setting up. You'll see that it's not as clean of a release. You see that one? Okay, you know you had some problems if you don't have a clean release see where you if it's not all white like where's that other one i just had see the the one right next to it one's left some behind whereas this one didn't okay this is this is where if it starts getting too too sticky and wasn't moist you'll start noticing some little white streaks and stuff so you're going to be seeing apparently we're going to be seeing what can happen if you just don't do it you know right in that sweet spot Unfortunately, I, I don't know of any other way to explain it or how to do it other than you definitely want to make sure that, uh, you know, I could feel too. You want to make sure that the whole thing was dry. But yeah, so this, this here is where the gel medium already started turning sticky because I was taking too long. And so there's the transfer isn't as good, but it's still pretty cool though, isn't it? It's still cool. So I'm not going to complain, you know, there's perfection and then there's perfection. Okay, here's that one. I'm not going to take the blow, the heater to it, the hot heat gun. I love it when you can see the, the photo through the wet paper. That really tells me that the water has absorbed 
into it. And it looks like right here did not adhere down because I don't see I don't see the image through there. So all right. And let me get another piece of paper here. This one's definitely ready to go. It absorbed the water really fast there. Look at that. See that? That's 100% removal right there. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Huh? Clean your edges up, stuff, you know, things like that. Okay, put it on that camera there. All right. See, I got, uh, what's, I'm not sure what that is. But that's not from the paper because the paper's clean. So that might be one of those little, uh, what do you call it? It's either the original photo or one of those little hard chunks. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I can't. I can't make out what what the issue is there. But that was a good. That's a good transfer there. So that you can see that was clean. Another clean. Two out of three super cleans. Here's another one. This one was wrinkled, okay, and so was that one. These were wrinkled, so I'm very curious on how they're going to look because they were so wrinkled. So let's, let's go ahead and soak these up. Hopefully they're dry enough. I didn't bother to test it. Sabotaging my own training videos. Okay, let's see how this one looks. Okay, well that's, that's coming out pretty good. That's another one right there. See? That's a clean pole. Right there, folks. Look at that. It's clean. And, oh, that's the motorcycle one. Look at that. Wow, isn't that awesome? The other camera, look at that. Now tell me if those don't make great gifts. I mean, come on. This is awesome, and it's so inexpensive. You just do these all day long. Hardly cost a few pennies each. This is awesome. Okay, well, okay, we got another big square here. Let's do this one. Now, you notice it's just been sitting here drawing 10, 15, 20 minutes. No big deal, or you can take four minutes to heat it up with a hairdryer and you'll be ready to go. So if you're in a hurry, this is actually the way to do it. Okay, I'm gonna get another dry piece of paper. Now you can see why you, you wanna have a roll of paper available. You go through a few sheets. There's that and look at that. Whoa, look at that baby. There you go, see? See that? Look at that, guys. So far we only had one that gave us a little bit of trouble and it still came out pretty good considering, but I just did five of them that were, look at this. It's like you, it looks like you painted it on. Look at this. Now seriously, people, seriously, why bother with sublimation and the expense of sublimation and the equipment, the inks, the paper, okay? This is the least expensive way in the world to make easy, gorgeous looking uh, wooden projects, image transfer projects. I mean, this, this paper and this process is, is a you know, it, it is just, I don't know how to say it. It's, it just changes the whole gamescape here, don't you think? Okay, it's, I guess they call it a game changer, if I may be so bold to suggest. I think it's a game changer because it's so simple to do. So easy and so fast and, and inexpensive. What more can you possibly want? It's just, it's awesome. Now I'm cleaning my, I'm cleaning my um, brush here that I used for 
the gel medium into the water that I need to release this stuff because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I always remind you guys in every video I'm an idiot, right? So I'm going to use the water that's still in this brush here because I've contaminated, look at that, I contaminated my water with the gel medium. I just didn't want to lose the brush. And it starts drying on there. All right, I can see the image showing up through the paper there. Whoops, a little too much water there. All right, so let's get another piece of paper towel here. And this is the one I really want to come out so much. Okay, here we go. And have you noticed that each of these have been single pulls? Not tearing a bunch of papers, just, just like that. Okay, look at that. Now if you look right there, you see that little bit? That's because I had either poor contact to the wood or... Uh, the glue was still not dry yet, which is probably the case because I can feel it's a little tacky and I probably should have dried it. It was the last one we transferred, so it hasn't really had enough dry time. Or, um, you know, you will let that area dry with the glue. It got too sticky or dry. And so on my plaque here, you're going to see it right there. You can see it right there on the corner. See, I, I spotted it on the paper right away. And there it is. So lesson learned, people. Re remember, if you want like perfection, you've got to make sure that it's completely dry and that you've got your gel medium everywhere that you want to transfer. But take a look at that. Tell me if that would not be an awesome gift to give somebody. See that? Look at that. You got light reflecting off of it from outside, but... I think my wife's really going really gonna to love this when she gets back. She's at work right now, so you know, she doesn't get to stay home and play like I can. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. Look at this. I'm going to line them up here. Okay, so you can, you can see them all. But there it is. And I've done six of them, right? Yes, six of them. Okay, so there you go. Six of these have been done right before your eyes, real easy. So let's go over the points. Number one, you're using quick transfer paper. Ricks can do it quick transfer paper. Please don't ask me in the comments, hey, can I use any other kind of paper? I don't know of any other kind of paper that does this at this time. So. I'm not going to be able to answer that question. This is Rick's Can Do It Quick Transfer Paper. It's available at my website. Okay. What kind of printer? Can you use inkjet? No. Laser printer only, please. Laser printer only. Laser printers are just as cheap as inkjet printers these days. So you, you just ought to get a laser printer. They're faster. They got richer colors, in my opinion. I just love my laser printer. I've got, I got a high-end inkjet. Artisan 1430, but I love printing on my uh, color laser jet way more. So that's the paper. And can you use Mod Podge or whatever? You can, you can certainly use them. Uh, lots of adhesives work. Anything that can glue paper onto wood will work. But I have found that gel medium is, to me, I think it's the easiest, most predictable results. And you know, it's not expensive. It goes a long way. So get yourself some gel medium. And paper towels, a brayer, and grab some kind of a plastic thing as a barrier so that you can prevent getting a gel medium a goo all over your roller. And then you end up rolling it all over the back. But there it is, folks. Look how beautiful those all came out. And you've seen for yourself. Okay, you've seen for yourself. You get complete transfers, complete transfers. And if you don't get a complete transfer, you know you did something wrong. And things happen. Maybe you forgot, whatever. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, subscribe. Yeah, right on. Appreciate that. And click that notification bell if you haven't done so already. 
and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.